On July 1st, 1859, Amherst College took on Williams College in the first ever collegiate baseball game. Amherst came out on top with a lopsided 73-32 victory. Since then, there have been millions of men who represented their schools both on the diamond and in the classroom. When Pete Incavelia stepped onto the campus of Oklahoma State University as a freshman in 1983, he was set to live out his dream and be a cowboy. As a three-year starter, he had impressive freshman and sophomore campaigns and one of the most iconic and legendary junior seasons of all time. When it was all said and done, Inky had put together not only the most impressive single collegiate season of all time, but he had established himself as the best college baseball player to ever play the sport. This guy has shown us the last couple of years he can hit the ball all over with great power. Deep to right center field. Back goes Myers. He looks up. It's gone. Another home run for Pete Incavilla. You can put all the shifts on you want. You have to play nine players in back of the fence to stop that one. In the early part of the 1980s, the Oklahoma State Cowboys were a perennial powerhouse. They were favorites to make the College World Series every single year, and the addition of Incavilla only strengthened their case. In his freshman season, Incuvillia slashed an impressive 371, 481, 804, while leading the team with 23 home runs and 78 runs better than it respectively. He appeared in all but one of the 64 games they played. The Cowboys returned to the College World Series for the third straight season, but came up just short, finishing in third place. But they had hoped for the 1984 season, due in large part to Incuvillia. He was not only the best hitter on the team, but one of the best in the country. Once again, Incuvillia delivered. He posted an impressive 352, 491, 776 line, led the team again with 29 dingers, 103 runs better than respectively, and his performance earned him his first All-American honor. The Cowboys made it back to the College World Series, but fell short once again, finishing in third place for the second consecutive season. Not only had Pete Incuvillia garnished the attention of opposing pitchers, but he also had alerted draft scouts across the nation. He entered his junior season in 1985 as one of the top prospects and looked to deliver another spectacular season. He is well documented with his numbers uh, and the level of competition we play as being uh, as good a hitter as you'll see in college baseball. And he's, he, needs, he belongs in another league. Uh, I don't question at all. I've known that for a year and a half. I think he'll be a very high draft and I think he's an outstanding professional hitting prospect. His junior campaign in 1985 is the single best season in NCAA history. He slashed a ridiculous 464, 595, 1.140, with an unprecedented 48 home runs and 143 runs better than in just 75 games. For the fifth straight season and third straight that Incuvillia was on campus, the Cowboys returned to the College World Series in Omaha, but stumbled out of the gate and finished in fifth for the 1985 season. Let's give Incuvillia's 1985 season some context. Here are his stats that he finished with across 75 games. Now, let's assume that he kept that pace over a full 162 game season. This is the damage he would have done. A stroke's a funny thing, you know, it's, uh, it's good one day, it's bad one day, it's good one day. It's, it's hard to keep that even keel stroke, and uh, uh, I guess if you could keep it even keel, anybody could do it. But, uh, you know, every day you got to come out and work hard and go back to the basics and take your strokes and uh, think about it and get ready to hit the ball. And, you know, I've, that's what I've learned since I've been here. I've worked hard all year, you know. I pretty much got my stroke down to a fine art right now, you know. I, I work on every day. Uh, I hit, I hit until before a game until I feel good, you know. I, I know I got to do the job uh, for us to uh, get the RBIs going. I, I had to do it early, and, uh, you know, I put the pressure on myself, but that's where I want to be. I want to help these guys win. Incuvillia set NCAA single-season records with his 1.140 slugging percentage, 48 home runs, 143 RBIs, and 285 total bases. His incredible season earned him his second straight All-American honor and Baseball America Player of the Year. Incavilia also set the NCAA career home run mark with 100 dingers in just 213 career games. His 324 runs better than were only 22 short of Jeff Ledbetter's career mark, which he set over four seasons at Florida State, compared to Incavilia's three. His career 915 slugging percentage was second all-time, only behind Southern University's Ricky Weeks. Aside from his statistical achievements, Incavilia still received accolades long after he graduated. 
1999, he was named College Baseball Player of the Century by Baseball America, and he was elected into the College Baseball Hall of Fame in 2007. His Hall of Fame class included Lou Gehrig, Christy Mathewson, Fred Lynn, and Jim Abbott. After his record-setting career, Incuvillia was selected 10th overall by the Montreal Expos and was immediately traded to the Texas Rangers. As a result of him being traded, Major League Baseball implemented a new rule that requires clubs to keep a ball player for at least one full season before being allowed to trade them. This is now known as the Pete Incavilia rule. He made his Major League debut the following season in 1986 and has a distinct honor of being one of only five position players in Major League history to go straight from amateur baseball directly to the Major Leagues and skip over the minors entirely. Incavilia had a very successful Major League career. He racked up just over 1,000 hits and 206 career home runs over a 12-year career with the Texas Rangers, Philadelphia Phillies, Baltimore Orioles, Houston Astros, Detroit Tigers, and a brief five-game stint with the New York Yankees. Pete Incavilia established himself as not only the best power hitter in college baseball history, but also as the single most dominant collegiate hitter of all time. His legendary 1985 season will live on forever and likely never be overtaken, and his career mark of 100 home runs will probably never be topped. His historic career will live on forever as he goes down as the greatest college baseball player of all time.